uh, for us today. He needs no introduction. He has been the voice against bad science on the website and in The Guardian. He seeks it out and insults it and critiques it wherever he can uh, in a forensic way. A brilliant speaker, fantastic performer as well, and a great ambassador for spiky science, Dr. Ben Goldacre. Hello. Uh, I haven't got a white coat on because I don't work in a lab and I thought that would be misleading and dishonest, so I'm wearing an anorak because I do statistics. Um, it's really nice to sort of see nerd power in action. Um, I, I went to college with George Osborne, he was in the year above me, and, uh, and I didn't really understand him and I got the sense that he didn't really understand or have a great deal of interest in me. And I think in some respects that, that tells a, a story about how weird we must all seem to politicians and bankers and economists. Because science, science, scientists are some of the most highly intelligent, highly capable and highly employable people in the world. And yet we choose to work for peanuts in fields that we feel passionate about. And I think that's very difficult for people to understand. I think it's very difficult also for them to understand the scale of it. I've been contacted by people over the past couple of weeks who've, who've talked about how they found it difficult to come into the UK to do postdoc jobs under the highly skilled migrant programme because they don't reach the threshold for the income necessary to be regarded as a highly skilled person. Now I was asked to talk a little bit about a brain drain, because I think we are potentially looking at a, a, another brain drain. And the problem with a brain drain is you lose your best people first. And also we have to remember that there's a brain drain going on all of the time, all around us. Some of the most capable maths and engineering and physics nerds that I knew at college don't work in academia anymore. They work in the city where they can be paid five or ten times as much to do the same work or the same kind of work. Right now, this isn't a particularly fantastic country to start working in if you're a young person. The average age, or rather the median age, at which, uh, <laughs> at which somebody buys a home in the UK is now 37. That's, that's actually higher than the age at which a lot of NHS trusts will fund you to have IVF if you can't have children. And that tells a remarkable story about how difficult it is to get in, to get on in this country on the wages that young people have. I don't want to sound like we're making a, a, a threat, and I don't want to sound like we're whining. But I think, like always with science, we have a duty to tell it straight. In the UK, you've already heard, we kick well above our weight. And the reality is, you either use it or you lose it. Thank you very much.